I mean, you guys can see it's it's a lot of smoke. <laughs> All right, so I'm so smoke. <laughs> yeah, we got one down here. I think we've got some vacuum leaks on the Mustang. Let's see if we can figure out where they're coming from. What's up guys and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at my smoke machine leak detector. It's homemade, it's pretty easy to make. I'm going to walk through everything with you guys and if you're interested later on we'll actually build one on video. I know you guys have seen a lot of them out there made out of paint cans and, and such. Uh, you know I'm not knocking anybody for doing that. I wanted to do something completely different, something a little more safe that way if it were to fall off you know it's not going to bust, um, the can's not going to get hot. This thing doesn't weigh hardly anything and it's completely mobile. You can drop it, it's gonna be fine. So first off, let's look and see what it is that we have. Essentially, this is a piece of four inch PVC pipe right here with a closet flange on the bottom that's sealed off. I wanted that for a sturdy base and up top is just a sleeve for this cap here. So that's all this is. That's pretty much the whole assembly. And look, there's even still, wow. You can still smoke in here. So inside, it's really simple. Uh, it's just a tiki torch wick on the inside, like you know, pretty much everybody else uses on theirs. This one's different because it's obviously made out of PVC pipe, and it, nothing really gets hot. Everything stays cool to the touch on the outside. You can actually hold the bolts on this uh, whenever it's on. So that tells you there, this thing is pretty well insulated. That is a 26 gauge canthal in there. Uh, wrapped, I don't even know, maybe 20 times around this piece of uh, Tiki Torch. Two ohms is what it ohms out to. So if you don't know anything about this type of stuff, uh, I will do a complete tutorial on how to build these. But uh, for right now, I'm just going to show you kind of how it works and the design of it. We're going to go out here and smoke test the Mustang. We'll bring it out to the Mustang, we'll hook it up and uh, just show you how it works. Then we'll smoke test the car. I'm going to hook this up and show you guys all right three two one so you can see instantly this thing starts smoking up pretty good it's actually very impressive how quick it smokes up and how much smoke it actually makes i mean you guys can see it's it's a lot of smoke <laughs> let's unhook it we'll get it all sealed back up and we'll go out here and smoke test the Fox body because I think I do have a leak. Okay, and uh, just in case you're wondering what this is, this is just a plug that I bought from the hardware store. So I essentially just kind of push it in like that. That way if there's a problem and this thing over pressurizes for some reason, uh, it'll blow that out of the top here. So that's all that is, uh, just a safety precaution because everything else is glued up and sealed up tight on this thing. Uh, while we're here, uh, never clamp your hoses on these. This is just my opinion, uh, my recommendations anyway. Never clamp these hoses because it at least could blow this hose off. Let's say you plug this into the car and for some reason the pressure starts backing up. You know, this needs to come off. You know, pressure has got to come out of this thing without blowing it apart. So it can either push the hose off or if it gets bad enough, it can just pop this plug out of the top and relieve some air. Anyway, let's go ahead, put this out here. Oh, and also, um, I put a hook here for obvious reasons, which the cables aren't really long enough for that, but uh, I mean, you could do that if you'd like, just make your cords longer. Oh yeah, and while we're here, I've had a lot of people ask about my hood struts. Guys, I just have not put my hood struts back on yet since I had the hood off doing the headers. The hood struts will be going back on here real soon. Just been busy doing other stuff. All right, so you have a couple different options here. You can hook your air hose up if you have a compressor. It takes about a half pound of pressure to run this or you could always just hook another piece of hose up to it and literally blow through it. So we have the air hose hooked up and it's only about a half pound of pressure that comes out of this. So a half pound to maybe a pound is about all you wanna do. Okay, so I have my hose off back here, which just comes from the uh, vacuum block and uh, that's gonna be where I plug everything up. All right, let's go ahead and get power to this thing. Like I said, it's really simple to use guys. And as you see, we already have smoke coming out. Actually, I forgot one thing. When you're performing one of these tests, you have to block off your throttle body. 
for obvious reasons because it'll just blow back out of it. I've seen a lot of people just tape like a glove around it or something. Um, I don't think I have a latex glove. So let me see what I can find. I'm a jaywalker, got a lot of fresh damage, oh no. I can't always be around to explore foreign love. Overflowing for Look at that down there. See it just boiling out right there. So anyway, that's gotta be addressed. You see that little stream of smoke coming off right there? Found another leak. Even the smallest of holes this thing's gonna find. And that's with now look at that the egr is actually leaking a little bit all right so um that's how it works and as you can see we've already found something and this thing's been running the whole time guys and it is just as cool to the touch and go ahead and disconnect everything see no pressure all right guys and that's it that's just how portable and quick that thing is to use so this helps you find vacuum leaks it also helps you find say bent valves you can screw that into the cylinder and make sure that your valves are in a closed position put some air through it and if you get smoke coming out of your exhaust or your intake then you know you have some bent valve so let's say you wanted to find an exhaust leak you could take like a rag and stuff around this put it in the exhaust still though you know put about a pound of air through it half a pound underneath your car you're going to be able to see anywhere that you know smoke's coming out of your exhaust you know think of the possibilities with something like this um, anything, any system that's supposed to be sealed up, you can find if it has a leak or not. Thank you to whomever it was that mentioned uh, about, you know, doing a smoke test on the car. I appreciate it. Uh, I just got a wild hair and decided to build my own. And honestly, I think that this is far superior to the paint can method. Say you need to help a friend out or something, you know, he's got a problem with his car. You can throw this in the back of your car, go over there knock this thing out the cool thing about it is you do not have to have an air compressor i'll show you exactly what it is i'm talking about right now just to prove uh my point what i was saying all you have to do is literally blow on the hose you can go help a friend out you can take this thing along it's very portable and there you go she's gonna make some smoke we're gonna cap that off it's already trying to build up inside the throttle body. All right, so. <laughs> oh God, yes, sir. Here we go. Yeah, we got one down here. Somewhere. Oh shit! Intake. All right, guys. There you go. As you can see, we have a major leak. Let's see. So it's not the heads. Looks like the actual intake is leaking uh, around the gaskets, if I had to guess. That's where it's coming from. Yep. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn this off. That did everything that we needed it to do. I don't see any other vacuum leaks, but uh, definitely got a leak under the intake which I'll be honest with you guys is really good news and I'll tell you why you know that little pop back that we've been having in the intake more than likely it's going to be a leaky intake so all right all right guys sorry had to swap over to the cell phone here GoPro's dead like I said I'm always unprepared I swear I didn't know John was coming over today though anyway guys another win for the Mr. Fusion that thing worked perfectly so we now know that we have a lower intake leak. I don't expect that to fix the whole problem with the car not having any power. Um, I truly do still think that that is all in the transmission, but that's awesome. We at least found a leak, so we can get the car running a little better. Hopefully that'll get rid of that pop because more than likely that's a lean pop, that's unmetered air that it's sucking in. That explains why this side of the exhaust over here was so hot because this whole bank was lean. I took my uh, temperature gauge and tested each individual tube and each tube was like four or five hundred degrees to where this side over here was you know in the 300s so anyway that's what's going on with the car all right so john just brought up a good point 
um, he was talking about the unmetered air and that very well may be why this intake is whistling so bad is because of that unmetered air there, there's a good chance of that anyway so we're gonna find out pretty soon get this lower intake either retorqued or new gaskets I know everybody's gonna say put new gaskets on it but honestly it'll be a lot easier just to go ahead try to torque it down see if anything's loose and if not we may end up having to double gasket this now what I'm scared of is maybe somebody shave the heads and when you do that you really need to shave the intake too because as the heads uh, come down closer like this the intake no longer will sit down like it's supposed to I don't think that's the problem I think it just didn't seal up as a matter of fact you can look over here you can see the RTV uh, down here so obviously they've had this problem before and they just tried to smear something on it uh, looks like it worked I guess on that side but that's not how we're gonna do things we're gonna come in and fix this properly one way or the other and I know everybody's asking about the uh, the buffing process on the car we will get to that at some point guys don't think that the car is going away and not coming back the car will be back but for right now John wants to get the car home so he can do some stuff to it I've got some stuff I have to do I have some videos I have to make so trust me the car will be back and we're gonna do everything that we said we're gonna do to it you know especially the the buffing of the paint and doing the interior of this car anyway let's show you the interior once again so here it is like I said it's all here we've intentionally not cleaned it up we've just left it the way that it was the only thing that we have done is with the console uh, we put a new console in and out of that other car and sprayed the armrest that's it other than that everything's exactly like it was and we have all the pieces to make all of this look new again all right guys so to be completely honest with you I know you wouldn't think it but this car actually runs really good it would surprise you I took it down the road as you can see in the other video I'll put a link to it right here but I, I took the car down the road and it runs really good it's a drivable car as it is so you can just imagine once we get all the little bugs worked out of it this car is gonna definitely be a good daily driver and hopefully have a little bit more power now I know everybody wants to see him go to a T5. He's not gonna do that. We're gonna stick with what we've got because why not, right? Plus, I really do think that the transmission is what's holding this car back. I'll say that it's a combination of things. The car has too big of a head on it. The heads on this car are way too big for a B-cam. The intake is way too much for a stock bottom end car with no gear. I don't know what gears this car has in it, but I'm sure it's probably 308s at best and it's also an automatic transmission that is not wanting to work properly so you can imagine this car is going to be a hell of a lot quicker once we get the bugs worked out of it but all these things together it's just not matching up you know vacuum leaks and stuff like that but the way the car drives i'm actually really impressed with it meaning like you know in the road it's not all over the place the car's you know pretty solid in the road the brakes feel pretty good on it quick update on john's budget on this car so everybody sounded off giving out budget information, giving out budget ideas, and the budget that he chose for this car, $5,000. Now, John's been keeping track of all the money and whatnot that he has spent on the car. Uh, we're not gonna get into that right this second, but at some point, we'll start to disclose how much he has spent on the car so far. So obviously, he doesn't need the whole $5,000 to put into this car, but do know that the rebuild on this transmission is going to be expensive, so that's gonna take a good chunk of it but it leaves a lot of extra money to really make the car nice. There again, it is a budget build, but look, everybody's budget is different. So, you know, to, to you out there watching this right now, $5,000 may not be much of a budget, but for somebody else, that's a lot of money. He's already over here tightening stuff up. I was trying to figure out what it was he was doing. Hey. Look guys. good well guys there you go looks like the intake was loose as hell tell you what while we're here we'll talk about that anytime you put an intake on a car like this if you take it off and put it back on and you put new gaskets on uh, torque everything down in the correct sequence torque it down to the right torque spec run the car through a couple of heat cycles then come back and check everything again now there's a good chance that this is not going to fix the problem by just tightening everything up but you know what it's worth a shot it doesn't take as much time to do and plus we'll put mr fusion on it again and see if it worked or not so it's that simple well all right guys we're going to end this vlog here today and as always thanks for watching